Yo guys, what's up? It's Warspear, and today we're going to be playing some more Crisis 3 Open Beta. This time I'm going to be using the Marshall, which is the shotgun in Crisis 3, and it's a very powerful shotgun at that. Again, we're going to be playing Crash Site on the map airport. It's probably my favourite combination of map and game mode in the Open Beta right now. And look at that! You can't punch down doors, but you can kick through them, so that's okay. <laughs> but you can't shoot them down either, so make sure you, you know that when you run up that door. Uh, I, I just ran up to it and tried to bash it with my fist at the start there. But yeah, the Marshall I've said previously, and uh, my other videos of Crisis 3 so far that the Marshall is very powerful and if you want to level up fast then I suggest you use it because uh, you can get loads of kills using the Marshall. In fact in this gameplay I get 50 kills and only 2 deaths so I hope you keep watching to see all those kills man, racking them up. But uh, yeah Marshall's lots of fun, it is a little bit too powerful maybe. Um, I don't think that it should be one shotting people when they have full armor mode ever. Uh, just because with the with Crisis 3, you now have Infinity Sprint. Um, everyone's running around. You've got this maneuverability perk that makes you run super fast. And I think uh, all these things just benefit shotgunners way too much. And to give them a weapon that can one-shot through armor mode is uh, a little bit too much, in my opinion. I mean, even the bow can't one-shot through armor mode. I guess those are sniper rifles. But, I mean, you can get close to enemies really easily in uh, this game. And that's what makes the shotgun so powerful. So, sure, if the guy doesn't activate armor mode, then yeah, one shot that stupid noob. <laughs> but if you have armor mode activated, I think you should survive it. I've played plenty of games where uh, a shotgunner is chasing me. I armor up, uh, get ready to engage him, and boom, I'm dead straight away. And like, I did prepare my armor mode, I was ready for the engagement, but there was nothing I could do after one shot. Uh, around about here I was just guarding this pinger making sure no one gets in it. Man I hate it when guys get in the pinger. It's so annoying just having to watch out for that as well while you're playing. You're just trying to run around the map look for kills and stuff and then you've got this big pinger as well plodding around the map uh, just getting in the way of you trying to get some kills occasionally. Uh, I, have, I have managed to hijack the pinger quite a few times now. Uh, it's just pretty tricky. My suggestions for hijacking the pinger is basically uh, get up on some high ground but what you don't want to do is try and power jump onto it or like just jump onto it you want to like just try and pretty much walk off a ledge on top of the pinger that's the easiest way in my opinion to get onto it just run off the ledge and just float down on land on top of that pinger and uh, just like don't move once you're on it try and not move and uh, you should stay on it and then look for your F key or your hijack button and you'll be able to rip that guy out of that pinger so that's my opinion for the best way and you saw there a very effective use of the secondary fire mode of the marshal. That guy was pretty far away from me and uh, with some nice accurate aiming I guess I managed to take him out of quite a, quite a large range there. He was in stealth as well so using stealth obviously you have uh, no sort of like armor mode, no like you do take more damage than when you're in power mode or armor mode uh, so make sure you remember that when you're playing and actually here you can see I'm being vote kicked. People have called a vote kick against me uh, it doesn't pass though, so that's good. I would have pro probably still uploaded this gameplay as my, my first vote kick if I did get kicked. I haven't actually been fully kicked out of server yet. I've had a couple of vote kicks called against me. Uh, I still don't think vote kick is the best solution to dealing with hackers. Uh, all we need to try to is you to do your best with your anti-cheat, get rid of hackers, and uh, obviously we're going to have to have some good admin tools for our dedicated servers on PC to l allow admins to uh, make sure hackers cannot get anywhere near their servers that's all we can do really but I'm no hacker so you guys should not be vote kicking me if you see me in game please don't if you're watching this video and you see me in game uh, and someone's called me a vote kick please uh, back me up and vote no on that vote kick button please thanks very much okay so moving on from vote kicks and the marshal I kinda want to talk to you guys a little bit about the alien weapons that are in Crisis 3 uh, I don't actually use an alien weapon in this game but I don't think I was just trying to show off the, the capabilities of the marshal pretty much but uh, I, I believe we can talk about the alien weapons anyway we can see quite a few guys in the server actually picking up we saw a couple of incinerators and an x-pack just a few seconds ago in this video uh, in my opinion the incinerator is probably the weakest alien weapon out of the lot it's, it's uh, kind of works the same way if you played Crisis 2 it works the same way as the the Mike X43 uh, you just basically have to stay on target and like hit fire burn them to pieces uh, incinerate them so rather than burning you from the inside out like the microwave gun this one just burns you from the outside in <laughs> that's pretty much the that's pretty much the incinerator um, obviously the mic wasn't an alien weapon it's nowhere near as cool and I just want to say to Crytek that 
you guys did a really awesome job with the with the alien weapons. I love the amount of time that it seems you guys have put into them. The animations for each alien weapon are just absolutely awesome. And uh, if you guys didn't know this, but most alien weapons actually have a secondary fire mode similar to the Marshall. And uh, basically, switching to secondary fire modes can turn like uh, sort of like plasma shooter alien rifles into like shotgun styled alien rifles and stuff. Uh, in my opinion, the Reaper Cannon, if you see a Reaper Cannon and you haven't used it yet, pick it up, just fire a few shots and check out that awesome animation for the Reaper Cannon, guys. That animation is awesome, it like spins around and stuff, man. Like, wow, you guys did awesome animations for those alien weapons and I just wanted to make sure I, I do talk a little bit about that in my videos at some point because, and I will try and get some alien weapon gameplay probably, I'll pick some up next time and try and show them off a little bit. There's maybe still a little issue with the X-Pack and the Swarmer as well, even though it's not an alien weapon, but basically uh, when you fire your Swarmer or your alien weapons at your feet, then it doesn't kill you, but if there's someone close to you, like an enemy, it will kill them, so even if an enemy is like pretty much in your face and you drop this X-Pack explosion or your Swarmer explosion rockets at your feet, then it's going to kill the enemy, but it's not going to kill you, and I think that's a little bit unfair. Um, because uh, these weapons are meant for long range engagements. You're meant to like stand back, like maybe somewhere high ground, like stand on high ground overlooking a crash site with your swarmer and like just blow it to smithereens. That's how you use the swarmer properly. And I think being able to like create a massive explosion at your feet and not like commit suicide in the game is a uh, is a little bit unfair for other players, the enemies as well. And I actually, I think it's on the jaw as well. Like the jaw, you can fire it at your feet now, and it will kill the enemies but not kill yourself. In Crisis 2 the jaw would actually not detonate if it was too close to you and I think that would be the best way to set up the swarmer and the uh, x-pack as well if it just doesn't explode. Well hmm, maybe not the x-pack but the swarmer for sure. The, <laughs> the x-pack should just... if you fire at your feet you should blow up. As simple as that. The x-pack is a fucking massive explosion. Alien blue electrified whatever that blue explosion stuff is blue fire maybe i don't know uh but yeah i think that should uh, kill you if you fire that thing at your feet just leave a comment below letting me know what you guys think is the best way to prevent people from blowing up these things at their feet uh right now run right about here watch my watch my ammo count in the bottom right hand corner there when i activate my max nano suit You'll notice that activating a max suit actually replenishes all your ammo. It doesn't matter if you have zero bullets in your gun, zero bullets in your clip. It will give you your full capacity of ammo back. And actually, you get more ammo than what you started the game with uh, for most weapons. For example, with the Typhoon, you might feel that you run out of ammo a little bit too fast. But if you control your fire and can get 10 kills without running out of ammo, and then activate your max suit, you will actually get 1,500 Typhoon bullets back in your clip. And 1,500 Typhoon bullets is good to last you quite a while. So uh, that's the end of the gameplay, guys. You're going to see some little match highlights there. But there is 15-2 uh, against some Hungarian players I can see in the enemy team there with their, their Hun clan tag. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay, guys. Please leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed the video. And I'll be sure to get you guys some more gameplay commentaries very soon. Let me know what weapon you want to see next. That'll be something good, something interesting to see. Uh, Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.